the Edwards chair of the Committee on Government Operations. It's Tuesday, September 29th, and we are here today for a virtual hearing on docket 1003, petition for a special law regarding an act directing the City of Boston Police Department to waive the maximum age requirement for police officer Daryl LaMonica. This matter is sponsored by Council Frank Baker, referred to the committee on September 23rd, 2020. In accordance with Governor Baker's March 12th executive order, modifying open meeting laws, we're able to have this hearing via Zoom. This protects the public and allows us to do our, our daily business and continue to serve the public. The public may watch this meeting via live stream at www.boston.gov slash city dash council dash TV. It will also be rebroadcasted at a later date on Comcast 8, RCN 82, Verizon 1964. For public testimony, written comments may be sent to the committee email at ccc.go at boston.gov and will be made part of the record. A quick summary uh, before I turn it over to my uh, the lead sponsor. The Home Rule petition would authorize the City of Boston's Police Department to waive the maximum age for the original appointment of police officers only for Daryl LaMonica. To provide background information and for education purposes, there's a state law, Chapter 31, Section 5858A, currently provides that the maximum age for original appointment as of a police officer is 32, as of the date of entrance examination, and also allows credit for military service. However, Chapter 43 of the Acts of 2007 raised the original, excuse me, raised the age of original appointment as a police officer in Boston by providing that no person shall be eligible for original appointment of a police officer in Boston if such person has reached their 40th birthday on the date of the entrance exam. This home rule petition relates specifically to Daryl LaMonica and does not alter the policies of the Boston Police Department. Mr. LaMonica would still be, would still be required to meet all qualifications in order to become a police officer, including passing the exam, physical capabilities, and successful completion of the academy. This home rule petition is the mechanism that would allow for Mr. LaMonica to be certified for original appointment. I will now turn it over, before I turn it over to the lead sponsor, Councillor Baker, for opening remarks, I'm going to first acknowledge my, my colleagues who are here today. Along with the lead sponsor, Frank Baker, we also have a District 9 City Councillor, Liz Braden, at-large City Councillor, Michael Flaherty, and at-large City Councillor, Anissa Sabi george Have I missed any of my colleagues? Very well. And Councillor Baker, before I turn it over to you, do you mind if we um, uh, if we kind of move this hearing along as, as, as fast as possible, uh, getting folks to do short uh, opening remarks and making sure that the star of the show, Officer Lamon or potential Officer LaMonica, will uh, get right to telling his story? Madam Chair, I have no problem with that. You know, I have I <clears throat> I don't mind people speaking less than more. Very well then, Councilor Baker, it's yours, and then we turn it over. Thank you. Um, so, so this this is actually my fourth time doing an, an, an age waiver, um, and I've in and one person has actually gone through, like you had said earlier. Daryl will still be responsible for all the for all the home visits and 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 that stuff to just get into the academy, which I believe he's in the middle of right now. Um, this is a type of thing where the police could go through the entire process and then at the end of it say, well, you're two months old or whatever, whatever that age is. We're just looking to, um, I think, grant him a waiver, which would be three months or so. He was three months too old when he took, when he took the test. So um, again, was in, was in a class already failed, uh, um, left because of academics, I believe. And he'll tell us, he'll tell us that story. And, and ironically enough, there is a person that was in that class with Daryl that was my last, uh, was a, an age, age waiver. And that gentleman, I think, was 45 years old when he first went into the academy. And he's, so he's been on for four years and totally loves the job. Thank you. Thank you. To my colleagues, as I mentioned, brevity is, is key. But I will turn it over to you before we turn it over to uh, Mr. LaMonica. Councilor Braden. Um, I've no, I'm going to be very brief. I have no comments. I look forward to hearing Mr. Mr. LaMonica's story and, um, and let you go. On you go. Thank you. 
Councillor Flaherty. Thank you, Elsie. I'll be brief. Uh, it's good to see uh, Daryl. Obviously, I'm aware of um, his situation and the circumstances surrounding um, his previous withdrawal uh, and uh, the, the tragedy that his uh, family endured. So um, I'll listen carefully, and uh, my recommendation, obviously, will, will be to support the author and the chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Sabi George. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the maker. It's good to see Daryl. Look forward to uh, his testimony today and um, brief pr proceedings, if I could uh, dare, dare request such. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, Mr. LaMonica, we'd love to hear your story. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, I'll start off by saying <clears throat> 2017, I was in the uh, police academy. Um, I, did, um, I did have two deaths in my family uh, prior to going into uh, the academy. Um, uh, and, and my personality is I like to, I try to take care of everybody. And uh, that was my downfall in the academy. It was a lack of focus on um, the academic portion of it. As uh, my sister, my mom died, so I was trying to take care of my sister. My elder sister was going through a divorce. I was always on her side trying to make sure she was okay. Uh, my son broke his femur playing hockey, so I had um, <clears throat> a lot of lot going on. Um, I, and I have two sons myself. I'm married. You know, um, it, it just a lot on my plate at that time. Um, but uh, it, it also works out good because now I know where my focus has to be, and um, uh, you know where I went wrong, and um, I, I have to. I have to take care of myself this time and focus on what I have to focus on. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, just to, I don't know if anyone, we'll just go in order of um, questions and thoughts. Councillor Baker. Uh, I don't really have any, have any questions. Um, I've known people in Daryl's family my whole life, really, really good family. Uh, from what I understand, when Daryl was in the, the previous class, today I've spoken with people that were in the class and also some of the people that were in charge. Um, everybody said, you know, it was a shame to lose them when, when they lost them. Physically and, and, and having the mind to get to, to, to be a police officer, um, I think Daryl absolutely has. And to give him this chance, uh, I, I know it's a large ask, but um, I think when we look back at it, and, and, and if Daryl is fortunate enough to get through not only this process, but the state, the state home rule process, and then the police process, I believe if he gets through all that stuff, we're going to have a really good police officer on our hands. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you. Councillor Braden. Thank you. Um, I'm just curious, Daryl. Um, I'm uh, curious about the reasons why you want to be a police officer. Um, <laughs> you, you know what? I, I've always wanted, uh, wanted to be a police officer since I was uh, young. So, um, I, you know what's funny is I never realized the reason I wanted to be a police officer until I was in the academy. And, and I know it might sound weird, but I love to help people. I really do. And... Um, I think that was my main reason for being a police officer. Thank you. Um, any other questions, Councillor Brader? Um, no, not at the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Flaherty? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Daryl, uh, good to see you this morning. And how far along in the, uh, in the first academy were you in? And then obviously, um, there was a, a tragedy that impacted your family, and uh, if you could maybe just pre briefly describe that to the best of your ability, and I know it's not an easy thing to do, but I'm sure it played a role in you not having uh, the appropriate amount of focus, particularly on the academic side of the academy rigors. Uh, yes, um, so I was in the academy for two and a half months. Um, every, every uh, the first, I think, I would say about three weeks, it was just world. And then when we started the academic portion, and um, every every Monday we had an exam, 
um, and uh, it was probably anywhere from seven to nine, nine subjects. Um, and I was 38 at the time when I was, I went into the academy, so it's been 20 years since I was in the classroom, uh, studying and everything. So, I mean, that really didn't, I, I, that somewhat affected me maybe, but uh, it was more my personal issues that it, it was the lack of focus uh, that I had. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very well, Councilor Sabi George. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I don't know if this is a question for you or for Councilor Baker, but I am curious about the process. So if uh, this petition passes the council, then passes the State House, where is Mr. LaMonica in the process with Boston Police? This needs to be completed, I assume, prior to acceptance to the Academy. And then where are we in that, fra that time frame? So, so um, when and if this passes here, again, through us, Mayor needs to sign it, and as quickly as we possibly can, I've already spoken with, I've already spoken with Reps Hunt, Beal, and uh, Senator, Senator Collins about helping us getting this, getting this through. I'm not really sure where they are in their process up the State House or if they're going to be able to, um, when they're able to take this up, I think the best timing for Darrell is is the fact that COVID is pushing the, the, the class out a little bit. I think last I heard potentially November, which would give us October and then, and then a little, you know, hopefully six weeks or so to get it up to the state house and, and, and pass it through. Because Daryl, I believe, is in the, the, the police process now of home visits and, and site visits and, and uh, whatever else they do to just allow them to come into the, into the academy. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Um, uh, so, Mr. LaMonica, where are you in the process with the Boston Police Department and what does the timeline look like? Where, where are you in the process and how much more time is there to go through that process? Uh, so, like Mr. Baker said, uh, it's here say November uh, would be the uh, academy class. And uh, right now, I, I already did the application, had my interview. Um, I, I went into headquarters for fingerprints, um, uh, photo IDs, and uh, I had my home visit, and uh, we're getting notified by email, so I'm just waiting on, I think the next step would be uh, medical. Um, and then uh, after medical, you pass that, then it would be the uh, PAT. And when do they make decisions on your admission to the next class? Do you know when that when that notification comes out? I do not. All right, that, that that's fine. I'm just curious where we are in the process and the timeline. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. That's it for me. Thank you. Just a few sweep up um, questions or clarifications. Um, and um, if you've answered this already, I apologize. Uh, but it seems like some of my colleagues are more familiar that, with you than I am. I'm the city councilor from East Boston. And so are you, do you, where do you live? Are you from, born and raised here in Boston? Are you, are you living in, in where? Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, yes, I born in South Boston and I moved to uh, Dorchester with my wife and children. Uh, we've been in Dorchester maybe uh, 16 years now. Okay. And so, and, and uh, I think it's great that then you want to serve in the community that you that you that raised you, right? I'm assuming you, you know, that that's a good thing. Um, yes, absolutely. Also, so normally, what is it, 32 to start the academy, and you you would be 32 in three months? Is that what the or, or 40 in or something? The, um, it, the, 30, 32 was was the a uh, max age. That was they changed it maybe about 10 years ago or so to 39 and I always read it as 40 they never and so I thought 40 was my last chance uh so I took the test in March which I was 40 40 years old and I turned uh 40 in December which I was three months uh past due say okay three months then and so um is there a specific lead sponsor, Councillor Baker, or you just have some guys, like, who's going to carry this at the State House? 
Uh, well, the rep, it'll either be Hunt or Bale, maybe both of them, um, and Nick Collins will do it, will do it in the Senate. I do want to commend Mr. LaMonica. I feel um, he's being very direct and honest. He's not trying to ask for any excuses. Um, he's saying he understands why he's, he's needing the second chance. And while, you know, you could have brought up other personal things, you really pushed that aside and said, I didn't stay focused and I needed to stay focused. And so yes. I do, I wanted to say, I really appreciate that honesty. And, and uh, even if, you just, you're basically owning it. And I yes. do appreciate that, Mr. LaMonica. Um, and then I just also wanted to, to, just for some context, as I understand the state house is, is a little bit all over the place, their budget's behind, everything is all over the place. And so um, I, I trust in our state house colleagues to be able to get this through. But if they, if at this particular moment they can't get it through, I want you to know, if I understand the law correctly, Council Baker could file this again. Correct, Councillor Baker, and we could do this and still push for you in in, in the state house next year. So, with the months that we have right now, I, I mean, they, we we don't have a state budget. They're still arguing over the empowerment. They're still arguing over police reform. They're doing all of these different things as well. Um, in this moment, so I just wanted you to know, Mr. Lamonica, it may have nothing to do if it doesn't happen this year. But okay. We, city councilor can do it again next year we're hopeful sorry councilor baker i didn't mean to take <laughs> i spoke over too much councilor baker no no i just i just had a point to make i believe that that if this goes up there and say the timing doesn't work out for this cadet class i believe the um the um waiver is with daryl so so okay. even even if we don't make that make that um initial initial which we want to try and do it so he can get into this class. If not, the waiver is with him. And um, JR, JR the, la the, the person that did get into uh, Darrell's last class was 48 years old when he got in. Okay. Former, former New York police officer went out disabled, always wanted to get on Boston. So it took him 20 plus years, but we got him in. Very well. Well, I, I do not have any further questions. Um, do any of my colleagues have any questions? Any final remarks? I have a question. Councilor Baker. Darrell, what, um, like, where did you go to high school and did you start working right out of high school? What do you do for work now? Uh, yes, uh, so I went to South Boston High School. I graduated in 1997. Um, and uh, a couple, you know, I, work, I worked some jobs. Uh, but then when I was like 19, I signed in uh, local 17 sheet metal uh, in Boston. Uh, and I currently uh, still employed there. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Chair. You're welcome. Um, so we'll just do concluding remarks. Um, Mr. LaMonica, did you have anything you wanted to say to us uh, before we went through and said our, our also, I guess, our goodbyes? <laughs> Uh, no, ma'am, just uh, thank you for your time. Very well. So um, I'll, I'll go in reverse order and have the lead sponsor end. So, Councillor Sabi George. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Daryl, for being with us and um, sharing a little bit of your story and um, uh, your experiences with us. I don't have any um, further questions or comments. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the maker. Thank you. Councillor Flaherty. No further questions, Madam Chair. Uh, good luck to Daryl and the uh, Little Monica family. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Braden. No further questions. I just wanted to wish um, Daryl um, all the best, um, embarking on a new career at, um, at later, and not, a, not a, uh, a, a rookie coming in in his 20s. So he brings his life experience to uh, this experience, this job. So I, I wish him all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Thank you, Madam Chair. Same. I, I'd like to just, Daryl, wish you the best, Joe. And I, I also would prefer a little bit of a mature brain when you give them a gun and a badge. So thank you. Good thank luck, Daryl. Thank so, you. My intention to my colleagues and to Mr. LaMonica is to bring this up for a vote uh, tomorrow. So thank you very much and um, have a good day. Thank you, Council. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good day. See you at the next See everybody. Thank you, everyone.